in this lesson, we'll download and install Ruby on our Windows computer. So the first thing that I want you to do is to open up your web browser of choice and head to rubyinstaller.org. Its front page should look something like this. And you can see it says it's the easiest way to install Ruby on Windows. It's just going to be a single installer that's going to set up everything we need to start programming. So immediately I'm going to click on this download button and that's gonna take me to a page where I can choose different versions of Ruby to download. What I recommend you do is select the version at the very top of the list and that's going to be the greatest and most up-to-date version of Ruby. As with most things in technology, the greater the number, the more up-to-date or newer that that piece of software is. So for example, Ruby 3.1 is going to be newer than Ruby 3.0, which in turn is newer than Ruby 2.7.6. Now, when you are watching this course in the future, it's probable that you may see versions that are even more ahead of what is currently on my screen. So for me, I'm going to download this version 3.1.2, but in your case, you might see 3.2 or Ruby 3.3. That's not a problem. Just go ahead and download the latest version, the greatest version that you see. The core fundamental mechanics of the language don't really change over time. Rather, the Ruby team simply adds new features and uh, creates efficiencies, uh, removes bugs, that kind of thing. So you don't have to worry and you don't have to uh, learn with the exact same version um, as I'm downloading right here. You're also going to see two categories here. One is with dev kit and the other is without dev kit. I want you to select the greatest version number in the with dev kit category. This is just going to install some extra dependencies for us just in case you want to use Ruby and other technologies down the line. It's kind of a more robust installer that includes a couple things uh, that are kind of extra bells and whistles. You might not need them, but in case you do later on, it's a good idea to just have it all ready uh, to use. So once again, with dev kit, install the greatest version. So I'm gonna select this one and that's gonna start the download process. And once that uh, exe file is done downloading, I'm just gonna open the installer and run you through it. It's gonna take a couple of seconds on my end. And there we go. I'm going to click open file right here and that should launch the installer. Here we go. Okay, so the first screen is simply gonna offer us the copyright license. So I'm going to click the button to say I accept the license, then click next. The next screen is going to ask us where we want to install Ruby. This is a matter of personal preference. I'm just gonna go with the default directory that's been selected here. You'll also notice two uh, check marks have been uh, uh, checked here. The first one is add Ruby executables to your path. We want to keep this checked. What this is going to do is ensure that we can use Ruby in our terminal application, such as PowerShell. It's going to enable us to use uh, Ruby as a command line program from any directory on our computer. If we don't include that check mark, we're gonna manually have to reference the installation directory of Ruby in order to run it, which can be kind of verbose and annoying. So we, we want to keep that first option checked. And similarly, this one, the second one, will associate our Ruby files, which end with a .rb extension with this Ruby installation. And this is just for users that happen to have, for example, multiple versions of the Ruby programming language installed. We don't really care about this, so it's totally fine to keep this checked. We can go ahead and press install, and we're going to see a couple additional things here that are available to be installed. I'm just gonna keep them all here. One of them is additional documentation for Ruby, and the second one is a development tool chain. That's actually the additional feature that is included with DevKit right here. Once again, it's just helpful for future things uh, that we might want to do with Ruby in certain applications and certain domains. So I'm just gonna click next and include everything here. And that's gonna kick off the installation process. This process may take up to a couple of minutes. Uh, so be patient and just grab a nice cup of coffee and let your computer do its thing. So I will check back in with you uh, when this process is done for me. So here I am at the end of the installation process you can see there is an additional checkbox available that says, do you want to run this command to set up that development tool chain? And as you can see below, it says that uh, tool chain is required to install gems with C extensions. Gems is a Ruby related uh, concept. A gem is simply a collection of Ruby code uh, that does some additional stuff. It's almost like an expansion pack for the language. This was uh, part of the option we chose here to install Ruby with a dev kit. Again, these are just extra bells and whistles that we might need later on. So I'm gonna leave this checked and press finish. When I do that, it might uh, launch this additional terminal and uh, offer you to install uh, a bunch of things. 
You can see it says we have three options, the base installation, the system update, and the development tool chain. I'm just gonna select the first one, one, and then press enter. And that's gonna start the installation process for that. It's highly likely we may never need this, but just in case we do, I'm gonna let it run right here. More importantly than that, let's go ahead and open up our PowerShell. So right here, I'm gonna to go to our Windows window, open up PowerShell. And what I want to do in here is just verify that Ruby has been installed. So what I wanna do here is simply drag this window a little bit down so we can see what's going on. And I'm gonna execute the command Ruby, then a space, then dash V. And when I execute this, we should see the exact version number that we just installed. So for me, I selected Ruby version 3.1.2 from the Ruby installer website, and that's exactly what I see. Keep in mind, your version number might be different. Uh, it simply means that you downloaded a more up-to-date version. That's totally fine. As long as your version number matches what you downloaded from Ruby installer, you should be all good to go. And simply by ensuring that this command works from your PowerShell, that verifies effectively that Ruby has been installed and that we're able to communicate with it. We're basically asking it for its version number and that is telling us uh, that the program is hearing our command, uh, receiving it and giving us back a response. All right, so I'm gonna close this PowerShell window. We no longer need this window uh, as well. So I'm gonna close this one and that completes the installation process for Ruby. So I will see you in the next lesson.